keynote speaker, Dr. Mike Levin. I've been working on Guam off and on since 1973 when I went out to do my field work on a small island in Micronesia. And then we started around the 80 census, uh, 1980 census, I've been uh, doing census work and survey work. So I'm going to talk today about the um, integrated um, statistics. So there are going to be four general areas I'm going to, going to be talking about. First, data availability, and then some examples, and then the importance of archiving, and finally, suggestions on the way forward, which will be fairly controversial. Um, I'm speaking only for myself and not for the University of Guam or, uh, or even the Knowledge of Guam project. The three things that the Knowledge of Guam goals are access, quality, and analysis. I'm going to be talking about mostly uh, how you get the data, so access. And these are the objectives. We're looking for a database uh, of Guam data sets is really important. So you don't duplicate effort, and you also maximize uh, the possibility of getting data. We need a website. We're going to talk a little bit about monographs, putting together uh, data, both historic and contemporary data, for Guam as well as for individual villages, and then the survey program. Okay, so there are three parts to any integrated statistical system. You need censuses, you need intercensal surveys, and you need administrative records. This is true whether it's a whole country, like the U.S., or a state, or uh, I've worked in a number of countries around the world. We did this in Kenya. You have to think in terms of all three, so you have an integrated system. Guam has parts, but not all of it at this point. All right, I'm going to talk about census first. And well, because Guam is a territory, not a state, there are a lot of problems with census. Um, there are three types of censuses which you get from the federal government. You get the decennial census and the economic census. Both of these come from the Census Bureau. The agriculture census now comes from the Department of Agriculture. The decennial census is years ending in zero, and then the other two are four years ending in two and seven, but they're usually taken the following year. This is a problem, because you only get the decennial census every 10 years, and things happen on Guam between the years ending in zero, so you have to have something else to fill in the blanks. If you were a state, you would have things automatically, uh, but because you're not a state, you get nothing. Uh, unless uh, you are lucky enough to uh, get something to fund it. To do a decennial census, there's a memorandum of understanding. Now, a memorandum of understanding that Guam uses and the other insular areas use is quite different from what happens in the states. In the states, uh, the Census Bureau does everything and it's centrally located. Here, you do the data collection independently of the states and then you send it away to the U.S. where it's coded, sometimes properly, sometimes improperly, and then captured and then edited, tabulated, and then things are returned to you. And among the things that are returned to you are printed reports, although there were fewer, there are now fewer and fewer printed reports because everybody goes, they want it electronic. And then rather, it's good for people like Monica because it used to be that if someone came into the office and wanted a table, you had to give them the whole book of tables or make some effort to Xerox it or something like that. Now you can simply, uh, because there, everything is electronic, you can go to the, they or you can go to the specific page and simply print it. Um, there are summary files uh, that, that you get which uh, give lower level geography than in the printed reports. Definitely down at the village level, but I don't know whether it goes below that here. I, I can't remember. You get something called a POMS, which is a public use microdata sample. And if you were a state, you would get a 5% sample. Here you get a 10% sample. You and the Virgin Islands get this. American Samoa and Casino Mike gets nothing. But the problem with your 10% sample is there's nothing lower than the whole Guam. You can't get any village level data. It's not on the, the pumps. All you get is the whole Guam. But if you're somebody who's doing research and you're interested in uh, looking at uh, progression analysis, a multivariate analysis, then you'll have a data set. It's a 10% sample. So you can look to see how one variable is related to another variable. It's good for students. 
so forth. And you've had that for, I think, the uh, 90, the 2000, and the 2010 are probably the spiker data samples. And then maps, and you get maps. You don't get the, where the houses are, but you get the outlines of the maps. Uh, um, the states get that too. The, the states get more because in their problems, you, they, get, they all have lower level geography. You don't have that. So you're kind of stuck. And if you want a special tabulation, it used to be, when I was in the Census Bureau, I used to run those for Guam. They charged Guam. I don't know what happens now. I think it just takes a long time and it's expensive to do it. And of course, you don't get microdata. Uh, you get the pumps, uh, but it's not the same thing. All the geography is removed, so you can't do anything at lower level geography. These are some of the topics. I'm not going to go through all of the topics. Uh, you probably know them. But I will point out, if you look at the bottom of the first column, you'll see military civilian. So in terms of the build-up, a person who wanted to could cross at the, at the Guam level, at least military by civilian, all these other characteristics. So the age and sex of military versus civilian, ethnicity, language, and so forth in, in the enumerated population. Uh, we'll talk more about some of these other characteristics in a few minutes. Now, I talked about the one element, which is the census. The second element are intercensal surveys. And so between censuses, you get surveys. Unfortunately for you, you don't get anything that you would get if you were a state. You don't get the current population survey, which is called CPS, which is taken every month. You don't get the survey of income and program participation, called SIP. You don't get the American Community Survey, which is really the worst thing that uh, is happening to you statistically, because in the in the states, every month, uh, one 120th of the population is uh, census enumerated, and then they compile statistics over time uh, on, from that. You don't get that. You should be getting it, but you're not getting it. Uh, the other thing is the household income and expenditure survey, which we'll talk about later. Um, you need periodic expenditures in order to revise your CPI. The last time you had an income and expenditure survey was 2005. Things have changed since 2005, but your current price index remains the same because it's only adjusted when you have an income and expenditure survey. Okay, but these are things you do have. You have recurring labor force surveys. Now there was a time in the 90s when it was quarterly, I think from the 70s through the 90s. Now it's, I think once a year, not very often, and that's not a good thing. Even though seasons, you don't have seasons here, but, uh, you definitely have changing patterns when, when people are in school, when people are not in school, when there's summer vacation, when there's Christmas and all these things. So you, you only do it once a year, you only get one point in time each year. If you have it, I think you normally do it in March or April, which is when you should do it because that's when people are thinking about paying taxes and other kinds of things, so you're already thinking statistically. The, you have an annual health survey within the Public Health and Social Services. I think you have that still. I meant to ask, uh, but, I, uh, uh, but anyway, you should have health surveys. And there are other surveys. And then OIA, traditionally, as uh, Pete mentioned, Office of Insular Affairs, used to fund all these various projects, uh, not the labor force surveys. And the health surveys are also done by uh, other agencies. But there used to be surveys which were done, which uh, provided information for planning. The household income and expenditure survey should be done every five years. Um, you had one in 1977, and then you didn't have another one until 1995, so you went eight years. Uh, and during that time, there were fast food came in and all kinds of things. But even between 95 and 2005, there were quite a few changes. It's time for another one. It should be done every five years. You haven't had one for nine years now. And even if you implemented it now, you wouldn't get it until next year. So it would be another 10 years uh, cycle. Uh, we've been doing some surveys in the last few years, I'll talk about this a little bit more, and we're finding it's very hard to get enumerators, train them, get them and keep them in the field here. The uh, Department of Labor does a good job, Bureau of Labor, but you uh, have to, um, 
few other things and you have to make sure you have enough enumerators, you, you want to get a situation where uh, you get the snapshot. If you're trying to do a survey or a census and uh, it's not done fairly quickly, you get a blurred image. It would be like trying to take a camera shot and then you keep moving the camera. You want to look from point to point. That's the best way. You can still get information, uh, but it becomes more and more inferen inferential the longer it takes you to get it processed. There is a discussions about the current application to OIA to fund a full income and expenditure survey, which you badly need. It isn't only for the CPI. You get a relationship between income and expenditures. You get an idea of how much savings there is and how much potential savings there could be. There are, uh, you really get a fuller picture of those households that are included in the survey about uh, the total picture, what's going on on Guam. And again, if the sampling is correct, you'll also get at least some of the villages. Now, I'm not, you would have to have expanded samples in places like the far south, the Vatican and Rahan and Baruza, you would uh, probably not be able to get full income and expenditure service because the sampling error would be so great. All right, now another kind of survey you have is what they call COPA, which is uh, the Compact of Free Association. These are the Micronesians that are moving from Palau and FSM. You have very little movement from Marshalls this direction. It's all going the other way to Hawaii. Um, and you, you get it in surveys. You also get it in administrative records, uh, which we'll talk about um, in a while. But, well, I've been involved here on these surveys since 1992, which UOG um, ran for us, and then the you know, labor statistics here did it in 1997, and then UOG again in 2003. In, in 2008, it was taken away from me, and uh, the U.S. Census Bureau uh, did it, um, and they did sampling plots. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later, but. One of the reasons you don't have American Community Survey is the Census Bureau, I saw a letter when I was still at the Bureau to the Governor of Guam saying that uh, we can't do ACS here because you can't uh, sample blocks because there are no addresses. And, uh, and yet they were able to sample blocks for the uh, COPA survey in 2008. There really is no excuse for you not to have the ACS. Even if, if you don't have addresses, you, we now we have the GPS, so you can shoot your latitude and longitude, you can make the maps, which I'll also talk about later, and you can get your samples. Um, Hawaii uses the ACS uh, that because they don't do a survey. Uh, after 2003, they stopped doing surveys in Hawaii. Uh, for the COPA, so that it's not compatible. Uh, in 2013, there was another uh, run, it's required by the law, by the compact, the impact of the compact, that the LIA has to fund every five, no more than five year intervals, so they five. If they did it at short intervals, it would cost more, so they do it only at five year intervals. But uh, they got the Census Bureau got them to agree to use the 2010 census data rather than do a survey for Guam and CNMI, but they still use the ACS for Hawaii. The ACS overestimates the number of micronations. That's why you lost and you uh, got less money than you uh, would otherwise. But please feel free to talk to me. If somebody's interested in knowing a little bit more about how imputation works um, and why Hawaii ended up with uh, additional funds this time, I'll be happy to talk to you. Um, it's very important. I've been talking about numbers and numbers and numbers, and the rest of the morning we've been talking about people and people and people, and you don't want to lose sight of the people when you have all these statistics. So the whole point of having the statistics is as a beginning, not an end product, to allow you to work with other data sources to get a fuller picture of what's happening on Guam, both at uh, the whole territory level and also at the village level. And as Pete uh, mentioned, uh, the celebration, the village celebrations, economic exchanges, cultural mixes, all of these things are important. But if you have the numbers, you can measure changes in some of these things. Not all of them. Some of them are qualitative, but some of them are quantitative. All right. Administrative records is the third area. So we talk about censuses, which are every 10 years. We take a, talk about surveys, which gives us uh, fewer households, but more information. Because in a census, you can only ask so, so many questions. 
can't ask and you can't target individual interests in the way you do with surveys. So these are the kinds of things that you have. Now, up until about 2004, you did not have a yearbook. When I was working at the Census Bureau under interior funding, one of my big uh, goals was to have all of the seven areas, the Virgin Islands of the Six and the Pacific, do yearbooks. And in 2004, the first Guam yearbook came out. And it's by far the best of the seven and continues. Um, I don't know, uh, two of the people have retired. I don't know whether they got tired of doing the yearbook or they just got tired in general, but it's exhausting to put together a yearbook. I'm hoping that you will continue to put out these absolutely excellent yearbooks and uh, they're online, which is also extremely important, um, but they also put books together. I think the next one, the 2013, is going to be about half the size of the 2012 because at this point you need to assume that people can look back at earlier yearbooks and you don't have to repeat all of the information every year. Um, births, deaths, marriages, and divorces come from public health. It's very important that uh, you don't lose your data, um, so that you want to maintain all of that. Um, you get WIC, you get hospital organizations, you get all sorts of things from public health which uh, go into the yearbook and which help for planning um, uh, you know, and measuring over time how things are changing. Infrastructure. Infrastructure is incredibly important as has been mentioned several times this morning already and you need to have ways of monitoring that. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, the COPA, um, the administrative records for the impact, the compact, it uses a lot of uh, infrastructure and other kinds of resources. All the various agencies have that, and fortunately for Guam, almost all agencies are forthcoming with, with their data. There are a few exceptions. Some of them uh, because they don't want to share the data, and others because they haven't been able to put together the data in a way that uh, is, conforms to the conventions of the Guam Statistical Yearbook. This is a slide, an excellent slide that Pete's put together, which I don't think you showed earlier, but all of these things that are listed here are things which are measurable. Um, well, it depends. I mean, even, even use is a general term. You have to operationalize it to get the statistics. But in, in, in fact, this is really an excellent list of uh, things which are important in monitoring infrastructure. Um, well, you have an incredible, uh, I've worked in the Guam Visitors Bureau. Is there anybody here from GDB? Well, you can pass this on. They're an incredible organization, statistically, and I think every other way, too. But I can't speak highly enough for the quality of statistics which comes out of there, and promptly, too. Um, obviously, you need that. You need to have feedback as quickly as possible. But it isn't only the visitors that you get. You get migrant people who are planning to stay here, people who are passing through. You'll get an, an incredible amount of information, including their occupation and other uh, demographic and social uh, information. And this gives you entry. And of course, you also get information and customs. You get, um, the characteristics, as I said, and you get information on the freely associated people. What you don't have, that you need, is exit points. You get the census in 2000, or 2010, and you're not going to get another census until 2020. So you're not going to get a complete accounting. You won't know how many people there are on Guam right this minute, unless you use what we call population equation. So you, in order to get how many people there are now, we took what we should be taking, what was counted in 2010, adding the births, which you get, subtracting the deaths, which you get, adding the, the people who move in to Guam, which you get, and subtracting the people who move out of Guam, which you do not get. And without that, you can't get a complete estimate of the population. You can get an estimate, because you can take uh, the population from uh, 2000 to 2010, and you can interpolate, then you can extrapolate uh, onward after that. So you get an estimate of how many are here. But because you don't have uh, the people who exit, you can't get it too precise. You need exit forms. But that's not really GDPs. I mean, it would be nice if they could do it. It really has to be done with the airlines, because about the only way people get onto and off of this island is by air. 
there are a few folk people, but uh, we don't call them folk people, uh, but there are a few people who come by boat, uh, but uh, you can almost throw those people away and uh, it wouldn't make any difference in your estimates. So there needs to be some kind of cooperation. We don't, I mean, I've been here on island when we've done experiments sending people into the departure areas to run surveys and that kind of thing. You can do that and that will give you some estimate. All right, conclusions on the data. Uh, we have the 2010 and earlier census data, so we can do trends. We have the current labor force surveys and other surveys. And we have this really excellent statistical yearbook. Again, I want to keep coming back to the fact that besides the numbers, there's the whole issue of quality of life and what's involved in having a good, I mean, the statistics help because they tell you how things are changing, how many people are in poverty, how many people using food stamps, how many people are doing this and that. But then you have to take into account other characteristics of the population. Okay, I'm going to, this is the second part, I want to talk a little bit about the use of the statistics and how you can look at things of the specific um, orientation. So, for example, if you want to have information for a particular village, you have quite a few sources of information. You have the census first, and depending on the village, um, you can go all the way back to 1920 if you want to. Most people won't. Uh, and then you can uh, go through 20. Yeah. You can you have the printed reports, you have some summary files, but you don't have months. You know, you cannot uh, make your own tables, you can only use tables that are available. You have surveys, and some of the surveys are at the village level. There are some that are specific to villi certain villages, but as I was saying, for the current labor force survey, only certain large villages would you have enough houses to actually be able to use those data. And then you have administrative records. So you can get first and deaths by village and public safety, education, and so forth. Those are going to be available. So you could get, for a particular village, a profile, a detailed profile of that village. We did one once when I was working with Joki Nakta in, um, in, when he went in commerce, so that's about 20, 25 years ago. We did one for the MAG, and uh, you can get a lot of information, a lot of information is available. Okay, and we do want to address community needs when we do any kind of document like this. But you do need that. Okay, I already mentioned, in fact, the second example. If, you, if you're interested in military and civilian, uh, comparing the military and civilian characteristics, there are data. Uh, now, you don't get all the data, uh, because some military data aren't available, uh, those on military bases. Uh, and so, it, but you still can get together a profile of uh, military versus civilian. One year, I think it was the 1980 census, uh, we, did, we ran all the tables for military and civilian. Uh, Susan Ham had made a request. It, it, I mean, at that time it cost $7,000, which would probably be twenty or 25000 now. So these things are not cheap if you work through the Bureau. And I don't know what to tell you, but it give you suggestions of things that now that I'm no longer in the federal government and I'm no longer even at Harvard, I uh, can say that I couldn't really say before. Uh, so be aware of what's coming. Um, these are things, again, that pe uh, things are important, and I agree on uh, things you could look at, a uh, military versus civilian. Now, the third category. Please, if you don't listen to anything else. If you're already asleep from hearing too much on statistics, please wake up and up for this. You need to back up all that chronic data files. And then, you need to back them up again. And then, you need to back them up and keep them in a secure place. And that doesn't mean the next desk, the, the one next to you. I mean, I, I quit, every time I go into the public health social services, I, I, I just get really, really nervous. I'm just waiting for a toilet to overflow and go down one floor and ruin all of the birth records before they make key. I mean, you have problems here. You may never have noticed it, but you actually have typhoons here. And you may not have noticed, but you actually have earthquakes here. And those things can do damage to buildings and therefore to the data. You need, to, you need to back up your data, keep them in a secure place, and then you need to back them up and keep them someplace else on Guam, 
which is also secure, which in most countries is a bank vault. And you find in the Bank of Hawaii or First Hawaiian or Bank of Guam, and you get a vault, and you keep it outside of your uh, own office. And if you're worried about other offices getting into your data and messing it up, you can avoid that. And then you need to back it up and keep it someplace off island. Now, a good place right now is uh, University of Minnesota's Compass Project, the integrated micro uh, process, computer something. Uh, I should know because I use it all the time. Uh, but in any case, uh, you should also be backing up. I, I hope I'm making a point. Losing data is as important as maintaining confidentiality. You must maintain confidentiality. That's uh, absolutely it the most important thing of all, because if the public, general public doesn't think their data are secure, they're not going to tell you anything. Uh, so that must be maintained. But if you lose the data altogether, no matter how confidential, how, how much confidentially, confidentiality has been maintained, your data are gone and it doesn't do you any good. So you, you must figure out a way of uh, keeping the data as well as maintaining confidentiality. So archiving is crucial, especially now that people do trends analysis. Before microcomputers, you always had to go to a computer center to try to get people to do trend analysis. Now you can do it yourself if the data are available. And that can be extremely helpful if you're putting in a sewer or electricity or water or something in an area up in Chico or Denido that you have some people living there and you want their characteristics so you get some idea of how big the pipe has to be to flow the sewer and, and the water. You have a law now. Um, I'm, I just got this, well, I peeped on it, so I uh, gave it to me that they, there's a bill 234 that requires Office of Technology to establish protocols for backing up critical electronic data. You need to back up your data. You need to do it so you won't lose data. Now, apparently, uh, the system crashed, and 3,000 birth records were lost and have to be rekeyed. Um, Immunization records are also important. I mean, all records are important. But the thing you... In the, it, when we were working together in the old days of DOS, um, while we, there was a beautiful integrated statistical system because the people doing the current labor force surveys, the people doing the birth and death records, and uh, GPP, everybody used the same computer package to process their data. So if somebody had a problem, they could call someone else, usually Monica. But somebody who could uh, you could talk to, so you could uh, figure out your problem. You didn't have to go off island. But if you're trying to do a new package that somebody's imposed on you, uh, then you often have problems, and you have to call off island or try to work it out. And the best thing you can do is have an integrated system throughout the island. So you use the same general packages, and you use the same conventions, and uh, then you're going to be a lot better off. This is the last part of the talk. What Guam needs to do now. For the rest of the day, during these meetings, I'm hoping that this talk is going to generate some discussion about what you need, in both individually and for your village and for Guam as a whole. And I think the additional surveys and administrative records will become apparent uh, through the day. But you do need to develop an integrated database of available surveys both tabulations and microdata to do trends analysis. You need to develop a website for easy access for researchers, students, and government agencies. That's in the scope of work already mentioned earlier today. And please, you need to archive. I mean, archiving, I can't stress it enough. You've already seen why you have to archive when you have this problem with the person desk. You don't want to go around spending time rekeying things, especially person desks which are not fully keyed as far as I know, all the way back. You want to try to uh, go all the way back to the beginning, and so early 1900s, because once it's gone, it's gone, and things need to be, uh, everything needs to be digitized now. I mean, that's the direction we're going. And paper can go away, so can electronic. Electronic even easier, that's why you back it up and put it number of places. Now I'm going to talk to you, this part is a little bit more controversial. Things that you should be demanding, uh, that I think you should be demanding. This is not, as I said, it's not what UOG is saying, as this is my own. You should insist on inclusion in the American Community Survey. 
Now, how are you going to get that? You're going to get that when your delegate, Madame Vardayo, is going to go to the hearing on the, in the Capitol for the Census Bureau's funding and demand that the American Community Survey uh, come to Guam and the other areas. I mean, it should be her and it should be uh, the one for CNMI, Virgin Islands, and uh, American Samoa. She shouldn't have to do it alone. But you, there is absolutely no reason in the world why you shouldn't have the American Community Survey. It's in the title, it's in the enabling legislation for the Census Bureau that as long as there's funds, they do whatever is done in the states. So though she may have to put in funds, but it's not going to be that much. It's going to be more money than it would be um, on a per capita basis to do it in a state because you're a small um, territory. Well, I mean, you're a large territory uh, compared to America and Samoa, CNMI, but small compared to any of the states. You need to be included in the continuing in the one-shot service. You certainly, I don't know about CPS, because CPS is going to cover what the American Community Survey covers. Um, and, and you can make your, sur your, your American Community Survey such that it covers SIP as well. So, but you do need, you should have surveys. And the surveys you do have, the labor force surveys, my suggestion that I made years ago was you take, you do it quarterly, but you take the quarter and divide it in three parts. So you do your sample for the quarter, but you have continuing enumerators who just, this is their job. So every month they go and do one third of the sample for that quarter. And so you can then have a running average. You could smooth your results over time and you'll have a, employment and unemployment um, over time and we've been able to even pull out the FAS from the survey. There are enough uh, people in there for the Freely Associated States to see how many micro the you know, how many Micronesians are working and who how many are unemployed uh, through that survey. But you need to do it. And then you need more involvement in the twenty ten results and the twenty twenty planning. I'm sure that you that Monica would have a lot to say about that if she were the one giving this talk. OIA is another organization that you should be doing more interaction with. There used to be a rep on, on Guam, and they gotten rid of most of their reps. So they, you need to ask them to reinstate the statistical enhancement program, which was a great program uh, that ran from 1991 to 2006 when they closed it down. One problem with OIA you're going to find is they would rather not know any kinds of problems. So if you don't do surveys, you can just keep your head stuck in the ground and you won't have to respond to requests from Guam for funding to alleviate issues that show up in surveys, um, like the COPA. The financial and technical assistance, now you do have right now, fortunately, the Department of Defense is helping you with the knowledge of Guam, but that may not go on forever. And OIA, in its mandate, is required to respond to requests from Guam to fund uh, statistical and other projects. So um, you need to try to be working with them on this. And we used to, in the 90s and the early 2000s, have training programs. And those training programs were really very good. Some were in country, or in this case, in, in, on Guam. And some were, like in Hawaii, we used to have an East-West Center and then later at the Census Bureau, bringing people from the various territories together. This is good because then if you have a problem and you know that someone from another territory has faced the same problem, you can, um, and, that, and it's even better now, now we can chat, you can, uh, you know, you can solve your problems. I uh, can, can't tell you the number of times I've helped African countries uh, resolve problems through Facebook because you don't have to do it officially. You know, you do it informally, no written record. There's a written record if you print it, but uh, basically it's there. Um, active agency working group on statistics to streamline and avoid duplication. You have, before you census a population committee, you should have that kind of committee ongoing uh, so that you can respond. You can think about st statistics on an ongoing basis, and when you need a survey, you can work together to figure out how to get it. There's supposed to be a central data collection agency, which is the state planning. Now, all the states have that. So you have the territorials um, office, which uh, is in, uh, uh, it's in the uh, stats and plan. So you should, um, they should be getting all the data so they can do the yearbook, among other things. Um, you need a full complement of statisticians in the state data center actively bringing together 
the results of the census of surveys and administrative records, you need to continue to enhance the Guam yearbook, including the website. What you want to do is keep move as things come in. So every month when the births and deaths come in, you simply put them online, and anytime somebody wants a yearbook, they can push a button and get the yearbook. You should have uh, not only once a year, but just ongoing. For Max, you in the late 90s, we already had a problem. We have the land management maps, and you have the Bureau of Labor sketch maps. The Bureau of Labor sketch maps are just incredible, but they're not linked to the actual geography. And they, but they are linked to a detailed description of every house. So when you do a sample, you can give the book to the enumerator, and then they can find it easily. It would be more difficult with the land management maps uh, and what needs to be done and what should have been done years and years ago was a linking of them. Uh, and so that when you want to uh, make a, uh, a map for an enumerator to do a survey, with, with the land management maps and the others combined, you simply would print them in, with the computer and the enumerator would be able to see on the ground where they're supposed to go and will go to those houses. You don't have that but you should have it. And when you have that, you'll also be able to run the census, uh, some, well, you don't have census data, but you'll, some data, you'll be able to make maps uh, using it. You still can use census data if you input it in uh, Excel and then link it to the maps, but you can't run because your comes doesn't give you any geography, so you won't be able to do it. You need to get back to the quarterly labor force surveys. Don't just do it once a year. Do it, uh, you need to, figure out how you can get your legislature to fund it. Um, I know that that was the reason it stopped. It's not, the return on the investment is just incredible. And it even census people don't get it, but you have to. Um, you need other surveys, and if you're doing the current labor force survey on a quarterly basis, other surveys can be add-ons to the current labor force survey, so you can get other kinds of information, like agricultural products that are being done, or various kinds of things can be added. Uh, to it. In 1980, we put together something called Guam's People, uh, a monograph on the 2010 census, which, I mean on the 1980 census, which incorporated data from the earlier censuses. We need to see that for 2010. There hasn't been one since. We tried in 1990, it didn't work. Uh, then 2000 passed, and now the 2010. So we need to update in 1980 through 2010. And you need to bring all data sources up to date, especially births and deaths. Uh, GBB does time the entries. To the governor's office and Department of Defense, Office of uh, Economic Adjustment, University of Guam, uh, cooperators in the grant as the administrating entity, as well as all the uh, NGOs and organizations, the legislature, the senators uh, that made it possible to help continue our conversation and all the mayor's council participants, especially the mayor of Barragada and the vice mayor. On behalf of the Knowledge of Guam project team, thank you for participating and helping us complete a, a critical phase of our project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.